Uh, good evening, Vandanda. Uh, I'm happy to share my uh, title that Marine Biofouling and its Control Using Nanomaterial, which is the second talk of this uh, day. Uh, before that, I just want to thank all the participants for their interest to join this FTP. Actually, uh, as our direct research coined that we want to showcase our research here so that we want to invite all the collaborators. So we want to collaborate uh, in the mode of project or we want to collaborate in the mode of publication or in a patent. So that we want to say that we have this facility and if people are interested in the same way, you just come and join with us so that we can share our expertise and we can showcase our a publication or a patent or anything like that. So coming to this topic, marine biofouling and its control using nanomaterial. Uh, before coming into the topic, I just want to say that uh, uh, myself actually uh, uh, I'm heading the Center for Ocean Research. Uh, actually, I joined the Center for 2007, and this is a uh, till date I'm working there, and our center is. Uh, one of the pre premier research uh, center uh, in Satyabha Mines with our science and technology. And we know that we are growing and we are showcased outside for our uh, research arena, whatever we are doing as a team. And myself, I am. This is these are all the areas where I'm working, uh, particularly I'm working on aquaculture and fisheries. Actually, I'm developing a field and also uh, we have ventured sea urchin culture, land-based culture, and the project is over. Right now we are working on green muscle culture. Why we are doing that is uh, to uh, two purpose. One is to aquaculture potential. And the next is uh, the larvae will be used as a biofouling a model animal. So that we are doing that in green muscle culture. This particular work we are doing in association with IGKAR Kalpaka. The next area is marine genomics and proteomics. Actually, uh, 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 our team, some of our teamwork actually when the talk is going to be in the next session also. We are mainly working on Vibrio genomics as well as elasmobranch genomics, elasmobranch uh, mitochondrial meta genomics, uh, and some of the uh, uh, microbial metagenomics also work uh, we are doing. So in that area, in that area also I am working and my team is also working. Then biofouling, biofilament control, so that I am going to elaborate this in the coming slides. Aquatic ecology and conservation, as I said, we are working on elasmobranch conservation, particularly uh, 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 my team scientist, uh, Mr. Kumar, he and one of the uh, scientists, uh, Marudu Pandey, we, they, we both are the report fellow and we worked on shark and ray conservation and we educate the fishermen about the illegal fishing activity and that program still we are continuing and nanobiotechnology uh, and I will tell where I am uh, uh, being uh, implemented in this particular area actually. Uh, we have developed some nano-based aqua feeds and we are also working on nano-based uh, coatings, uh, particularly anti coating coatings. And we are also working on uh, some kind of nano-based vectors to deliver product or any kind of drugs to veterinary animals. And marine bioinformatics, particularly my area, I'm working on genomics as well as in metagenomics and post-genomics, uh, uh, post-metagenomic analysis and all uh, we are doing in our work. Also, we are making a, a kind of a, a drug docking based model for uh, testing this uh, biofouling also. So we want to test whether any compound or any kind of material which is having the docking efficiency towards the uh, uh, control of this biofouling addition. So we uh, work on the target and we are also working on the ligands. So marine drug and natural product, uh, as everybody is working on that and so that we, we people are also working on that and we are finding some solution for that and particularly myself is working on antimicrobial activity as I am concentrating mainly on biofilms. Then marine biotechnology where uh, I am concentrating on microbial based uh, uh, products, any kind of uh, product as uh, uh, most of my work is concentrated on metal based nanoparticle. Now I'm just shifting towards a microbial product based polymer, which can be converted as a nanomaterial and then used for anti-fouling on a further aquaculture application. These are all my area of interest. And uh, today the topic, this is the content of my uh, uh, entire presentation uh, about the center already uh, I have narrated and even Dr. Ganesh sir uh, explained it in a very detailed manner. Thanks for him. And what is biofouling? Uh, I'm going to talk about the marine biological stickers. 
some of the people you are aware of uh, if you are a ma ma marine biologist you are very well uh, aware of the biopolyp and some of the people are zoologists here and some of the people are not uh, and related to marine biology directly so that their basic will be very helpful in this particular slides impact of impact of marine biofouling on industries what kind of impact uh, these stickers are giving to the uh, industries and what are the major marine biofouls uh, i am talking about some of the fire biofouls i want to tell the biology of this biofoul is that basic will be help us to know how to combat with this biofouls and what is an anti fouling technology if it is a biofouling definitely there should be a uh, combating technology that is called as anti fouling technology and what i have carried out in the center for ocean research that time we are going to na uh, narrate in the uh, last slides last few slides so before uh, entering into the topic i just want to say that uh, uh, daily we used to brush our teeth okay uh, why we are brushing means that is one of the anti fouling activity so in the uh, whatever we are eating and our buccal cavity having some kind of bacteria in the uh, mouth uh, so, uh, in the teeth region so these bacteria uh, uh, have the tendency to form a biofilm uh, when when we are sleeping in the night so this become uh, 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 a progressive biofilm in the uh, uh, mouth cavity and they started secreting the slime that's what our saliva have the slimy nature in the morning so that we are we are all forced to brush our teeth with the help of a paste and with the help of the brush the paste is here is the chemical anti fouling agent and the brush is the mechanical anti fouling property which is helping to clean our teeth to eradicate the biofilm in our teeth this is the best example of a biofilm and it is very simple and we all used to uh, go with this kind of procedure uh, and this photo particular photograph uh, if you are walking near the shore shore if it is a rocky area we can see such kind of animals sitting on the surface uh it is very sometimes this kind of greeny appearance it is uh, nothing but the seaweeds and the particular brown thing they are the matured adult thallus of the seaweeds so uh, if it is in a sea shore it is very beautiful and they can uh, uh, like the biofouling if it is in a rock okay this is an another example of uh, biofouling i am talking about the animal kingdom here you can see some of the barnacles and uh, uh, oysters or crustacean uh, or sorry not crustacean the mollusk everything is here actually the barnacle is a crustacean and the uh, bivalve as well as uh, crustacea like bivalves and all they are belongs to a molluscan community these animal they are all used to stick on to the, the rocky surfaces like this and this also very look uh, they have a beautiful look when we are walking along the seashore and it, it, it will be good for our eyes but these kind of organism if it is sticking to a man made structure it is it is a, if it is sticking to a shipping hull if it is sticking to a, any kind of marine civil structure it it is become a big mess and it is a biggest problem and we have to control it that is the topic uh, today we are going to talk about so before entering into the bio, uh, the elaborate manner of marine biofouling i just want to tell biofouling depends upon the watery environment can be divided into marine biofouling and freshwater biofouling so uh, why i am telling about the watery environment is whenever there is a watery environment it may be any kind of uh, salt water or fresh water if you are immersing any kind of surface in the water it, immediately there may be a tendency on an adhesion tendency uh, occur on the particular environment in the interface of water as well as the uh material <clears throat> so the biomolecules present in the water they started because of their uh, uh, ionic nature they started adhering to the surface and form a film on the surface after that the um, uh, organism whatever uh, in the planktonic stage in the uh, water they come and stick on to the surface that is called as biofouling so it may happen in the marine environment or it may happen into the freshwater environment both the biofouling have some serious problem in industries and various activity whatever we are facing daily here are some of the examples uh, this is the shipping industry we all know shipping industry is the major industry facing the bar bar biofouling problem because <coughs> ship hulls the bottom of the ship hull should be always clean and smooth then, then only it can sail easily into the <coughs> water the voyage will be very easy and it will it will be very speed if it is having a smooth surface 
if it is a rough surface organized uh, accumulated by different kind of uh, uh, organism uh, it, it cannot be uh, uh, achieved at expected speed so by uh, uh, shipping industry is having the major biofueling problem then power plant industry we all know power plant industry are situated nearby the coastal parts of all over the india even not over india uh, all around the world the nuclear power plant and thermal power plant they definitely are uh, uh, situated nearby the uh, water source near the area particularly the coastal area because they use uh, sea water or any water as a, a secondary coolant for example in our kalpakkam uh, madras atomic power station they are using sea water as a secondary coolant their, their sodium as the uh, uh, primary coolant and some of the coolant they are also even they are using deuterium water also but uh, the uh, the secondary coolant is sea water so when they are utilizing the sea water and they are sucking the sea water from the sea to the industry i mean to the maps plant uh, they have the problem with the biofueling so uh, with the pipelines which are sucking the water they have the tendency to accumulate with, uh, with these organism and that become the problem in the power plants and oil platform and rigs all the oil platforms and natural ga gas platforms are in the coastal area or in the marine the, uh, marine uh, continental shelf only there they will construct the platform oil rig platforms <coughs> there these platform have the problem of this sticking problem the barren biological stickers they stick onto those surface and they started deteriorating those platforms then the marine civil structure uh, as a rig uh, i am telling about all the structures so even our common bridge or any other bridge or wherever there is a bridge which is connecting a uh, mainland to the island or anywhere else the ridge which is of a concrete structure there also there is a biofouling occurs and it can have the tendency to deteriorate the even concrete structure then ocean meteorological boys all the data boys which are floating in the sea water they have this problem of biofouling and uh, this will increase the boy and they have the tendency to uh, sink into the water okay uh, so there will be a problem in the data boys also then underwater cables uh, recently even our prime minister modi he uh, just uh, inaugurated the underwater cable for a uh, uh, high speed inter internet connection from mainland to andaman nicobar island even the underwater cable which is lying in the uh, water underwater in the uh, andaman seas now there may be a organism they started sticking onto the cable this cable from the normal weight if the animals are sticking and accumulating the weight may increase and they may damage the cable and once the, the cable cable may have get damage so that have we have to be taken then aquaculture cages uh, nowadays we, pe we people are talking about cage aquaculture cage aquaculture is having the main problem of biofouling because the cage net it is normally used to foul with the seaweed fouling and the frames they used to foul with the other organism like green mussel or anything this if it is a uh, foul on the frame of the cages it may increase the weight of the cage and if it is fouled on the net of the cv uh, if it is fouled on the uh, net i mean cage net it may uh, stop the water circulation inside the cage so there may be a tendency of animal having uh, a low devo problem or the nutrient may cannot reach the cage inside easily if it is completely arrested with the fouling so we have to stop the biofouling in the cage industry also i mean aquaculture cages also then marine park i, I think recently we uh, we have a marine park in chennai uh, particularly in oyama which is nothing but the bgp marine kingdom it's a big oceanarium particularly in our india so they are keeping some of the major marine animals also so even they are using sea water but they are also going to face the same problem because they use the sea water and the wall of the ocean area the uh, the transparent wall they have to clean in every interval otherwise these biofouling organisms started accumulating in the ocean area wall and that may have the uh ugly look to the ocean area and that have to be cleaned properly when we are talking about the fresh water biofouling the best example is drinking water pipelines uh, so that the corporation water whichever coming to our uh, uh, home uh, uh, so these pipelines they may get foul with the bacteria or a dietum that may so that they are cleaning with the chlorinated water so that's what all these uh, 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 uh that uh, corporation water is supply uh, uh, treating it with the chlorine and supplying it okay then 
water transportation vehicle, uh, uh, some of the river transportation vehicles, a boat or anything else, even the boat, uh, the hull or the bottom of the boat, uh, they, they have the tendency of accumulation of this freshwater biofowlers. Then the domestic wat uh, water storage tank. We all have the over storage tank in, uh, in our home. If it is an apartment also, we have a common storage tank. If it is uh, an yeah, individual house also, we have a storage tank. Uh, definitely, they, every house have a uh, storage tank. And we used to clean this tank uh, once in a month or uh, twice in a month because uh, the inner water of the tank, they have the biofouling. They, they, mainly, they have the algal fouling, particularly a greenish or a blackish green color mat will form on the uh, uh, inner wall of the tank. That have to be cleaned properly and uh, generally in how we in our home we use bleaching powder or any kind of mechanical stuffer to clean the uh, uh, that uh, algal mat uh, in the storage tank. Then water treatment plant as well as sewage treatment plant. We all know these plants they have they are uh, handling a large amount of water. Maybe the freshwater uh, treatment plant or a sewage treatment they are large. So all the uh, water treatment plant even the surface they have the problem of this fouling organism, it may be a bacteria or it may be a diatom or any kind of fouling organism may uh, started uh, sticking onto this uh, plant uh, uh, surfaces and that have to be cleaned properly otherwise it give any kind of foul smell or it may be a vector for any kind of pathogenic organism. I am already said that river transportation vehicle nothing but with the boat, the boat has have to be cleaned properly. And uh, the other example is vessels, toilets, and pools. Vessels is nothing but the uh, kitchen utensils. We all know if you are keeping the uh, uh, plates or uh, uh, any kitchen uh, utensils in the sink for a long time in water, we can see the slimy appearance in the water because of the food particle there. They used to have this biofouling problem. So we used to uh, 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 use the detergent and the scrubber and clean the vessel vessels and utensils and for the next usage. Same, our toilet used to clean. The otherwise, if it is not clean, the appearance of the toilet may get worse and there may be a foul smell that have to be cleaned. Then the swimming pools that also have to be cleaned. That's what all the swimming pools are treated with the chlorine so that uh, to avoid such kind of biofilm formation in the wall as well as any pathogenic outbreak. Then the other example is an aquarium. Generally, we people have an aquarium in the home. One minute please. Hello, sorry. Actually, this aquarium we always used to have aquarium in our home, and we used to clean it in a periodical manner. If the aquarium glass uh, wall is very clean, we won't clean it. Uh, we won't uh, uh, talk about this. When uh, within a short period of interval, the aquarium water will fall with the diatom which is present in the fresh water. And so once in a while, we have to clean the aquarium because of this um, diatom falling in the uh, uh, aquarium tanks. So these are all the best examples of biofueling in marine and freshwater environment. And some of the other examples are dairy industry. Generally, whenever in milk industry, the pasteurization uh, process, they have the problem of this uh, milk-based protein. The dairy protein may have started sticking onto the uh, vessels and vessel surfaces that have to be cleaned properly. Otherwise, otherwise, it may be deteriorate the milk production. Then the medical implants, if we have any kind of uh, damage or a bone uh, break or any kind of uh, uh, a crack, a bone crack or anything, they want to uh, clear it with any kind of metal, such kind of uh, fixing a plate or a titanium plate or any metal plate or just a bone joint. Uh, generally, in, uh, in, in a biomedical side, they used to use such kind of plates. And these plates are also having this plated adhesion as well as uh, blood protein uh, 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 sticking onto the surfaces and that may have the problem to other kind of infection. So that have to be uh, treated properly. Then aeroships. Though aeroships are uh, using only the sky, uh, sky wave, but the cloud particle which is having the aerosols, that aerosols which is uh, accumulated with some kind of microorganism, 
the microorganism which is present in the aerosols they have the tendency to stick onto this uh, airship surface and they have the tendency to create a microbial corrosion at, at the, and that may damage the aerosol uh, surfaces then sensor it may be an underwater sensor or it may be a terrestrial sensor these sensors having the if it is an underwater sensor definitely there may be a biofouling problem as i said if any uh, kind of material it is immersed in the sea water there there may be immediate accumulation of bacteria diatom as well as the larval sediment then the eye lenses this is the best example another best example those people who are using contact lens they used to take the contact lens and they used to clean with the uh, like a lens cleaning water the lens cleaning of the water is nothing but the ensen solution this ensen solution is nothing but the anti fouling agent because these uh, contact lens they have the tendency of uh, any kind of uh, ocular uh, based uh, protein they may stick onto the cl or any kind of protein they deposit it onto the cl they because a tear tear gland which uh, uh, they have the tendency to give some kind of biomolecules that may stick onto this uh, cl so this contact lenses once in a while we have to take the remove the contact lens and we have to clean it with, with the ensen solution then it will get cleared and we can use it uh, in the routine manner then oral biofilm already i gave the example daily we are brushing our teeth moving on to this biofouling actually uh, as per wikipedia any kind of accumulation like plant uh, microorganism plant algae or animal on a wet surface is called as biofouling or biological fouling so biofouling may occur in a biotic or abiotic surfaces and today we are going to talk about the abiotic surfaces particularly about ship hulls and other uh, marine based industry uh, for example for biotic thing is uh, even the turtle shell they have the tendency they uh, some kind of barnacle they used to stick onto those uh, turtle uh, shell or uh, or what to say uh, even uh, the whale uh, they have the uh, barnacle they are sticking on on the uh, on its head of the whale so that also i uh, have uh, some of the examples for biotic thing but uh, abiotic surface biofouling is the biggest problem for all kind of man made structures so based on the animals sticking onto the biofouling we can classify this fouling as a soft fouling as well as a hard fouling if it is a soft fouling soft fouling it may be because of the soft coral sponges anemones tunicates and nitrites these animal have the soft nature but they used to foul and uh, eradicating the soft fouling also is the biggest task in marine industry whereas hard fouling is because of barnacles mussels tube worms and bryozoans as well as seaweed and we are going to mainly talk about this hard fouling uh, in a subsequent slides so these are all the heroes of marine biofilm it may be a bacteria it may be a diatom the best example is navicular species and uh, barnacle here we can see the barnacles here it is a crustacean uh, whereas this is a uh, these are annelids and these are mollusks uh, green mussels so this is tube worms and these are green mussels and uh, brown mussels they are bivalves so this picture shows a uh, uh, a ship which is uh, taken to the dry dock area in the dry dock area generally they used to clean the uh, hull of the ship uh, because if it is not smooth in uh, uh, in a particular period of interval they used to take the ship uh, from the sea up to the dry dock area and they clean the uh, hull so if it is not clean properly we cannot achieve the speed properly in the ship so see you can see the completely it is fouled with barnacles see the height of the hull so we cannot see because the entire part will be immersed in the sea water so this is the major part of the ship which is a two third of the ship which is immersed in the uh, sea water so it have to be cleaned properly and it will be very smooth to achieve the ex expected speed okay so uh, before entering to this uh, the actual problem of this biofouling i just want to narrate the biofouling is having a linkage with the carbon emission as well as greenhouse gases and it have it is also have to be taken care in the sdg goals especially the target uh, number 14 life below water why means uh, as i said if the ship if it is having a smooth surface it is easy to sail in the sea water if 
it is foul with the organisms the smooth surface will get rough and this uh, the captain or the crew or the sailing team they cannot achieve the expected speed so to uh, achieve the expected speed they want more energy so for more energy they will burn more fuel it may be a, a fossil fuel or, or anything they um, uh, burn more fuel that may lead to a large quantity of carbon emission if the if the surface is rough if they are uh, uh, using more fuel and if there may be a lot quantity of carbon emission it can lead to a greenhouse gases already we are getting more greenhouse gases particularly 13 percentage of the greenhouse gas emission is because of the ship transportation okay because large amount of transportation actually uh, uh, the business kind of transportation only happen through the uh, sea water transportation only so large commission a large amount of emission particularly 13 percentage of the emission is because of the Sea uh, ship transportation and that can be lowered with the help of the smooth muscle, smooth surface and the smooth surface can be achieved only with the help of the uh, uh, non biofouling uh, surface. That means we have to use a proper anti fouling agent. Here. So as per SDG target also we have to think about it and we have to come with a new solution to control this biofouling at the ship house. And here are some of the examples. So you can see this picture shows a, a data boy. Uh, we all know data boys are the data or the agent which is uh, trans transmitting the uh, ocean observatory data because you can see this in this data boy you can see some sandbox and some of the sensors are there at the top of the data boy and this data boy will be floated in the sea water and they can uh, through the sensor they can uh, get all the data uh, here accumulated in this data boy and this will be transported to the satellite if this data boy is accumulated with such kind of organism fouling organism like seaweed and all the weight of the data boys get increased and there may be a tendency to sink into the water so that we we lost the data boy and we lost the uh, costly sensor and we lost the continuous monitoring of the ocean observation and as well as the satellite data uh, properties okay so biofouling is also having a problem in the data wise here in an another example of a ship hull which is completely fouled with seaweed as well as i shown this picture it is completely fouled with the barnacle like barnacle even seaweed also fouled this uh, this is hard for them the seaweeds they are the uh, coming under the uh, even though it is a plant variety they used to uh, kind of coming under the classification of hard fouling and uh, eradicating this fouling is also not an easy task and we have to do a more kind of mechanical process of cleaning if we are not using a proper anti-fouling paint then as i already said that uh, any kind of bridges or any kind of marine jetty which is having a uh, column like the civil column like this uh, which is the uh, which which will carry the entire platform uh, uh, in the sea so this even the column even it, it even it is made up of concrete uh, there then you can see a such kind of foul accumulation of foul by and organism uh, slowly they will deteriorate the property of this concrete and there may be a damage to this kind of bridges also and these are also some of the examples in the power plant sector actually you can see uh, these uh, pictures are taken from the Madras Atomic Power Station, see the water which is taking the sea water, it is completely for the scale fouling. So almost because of this fouling, the half of the pipe is closed and the entire pipe is closed because of this uh, muscle of the bival muscle, it is completely for this uh, surfaces. Here you can see the tube heat exchangers and plate ex heat exchangers. So all these uh, particular equipments, they use the sea water, they, actually with this pipe, they suck the sea water and they take to this heat, heat exchanger for the uh, heat exchange. Uh, for the heat exchanger's process, they use these heat exchangers. See, if it is completely fouled, they, uh, the pipe cannot have tendency to suck the exact water what it is needed. So the flow, what is needed for the industry that cannot be given to the other end. So there may be a, a, a loss in the budget, the water loss because the expected water cannot be sucked properly because of this fouling 
and the heat exchanger uh, heat exchanger uh, exchanging process particularly the thermal budget also get declined or increased because of this fouling and there may be a problem of a high pressure built in the uh, particular power plant industry and it may lead to any kind of accident that will have a worse situation to the coastal population there itself though so though biofouling is not visible in these kind of industries but it is having a serious problem and these industries are thoroughly working on that and they are controlling the fouling in every interval and uh, these are all some of the other examples like uh, you can see a sensor it is completely fouled with the barnacles and, and, and another data boy which is uh, completely fouled with the goose muscles and uh, goose barnacles not uh, the muscle it's a goose barnacles and you can see even in this data boy they are uh, having a large uh, solar panel that and all being uh, boarded in that boy but if it is uh, fouled this much means it have the tendency to sink in the water and even they completely lost the structure also and here one tide cage the tide cage is the instrument which is used to measure the high and low tide of uh, any kind of uh, coastal area so this uh, particular tide cage is also found with these organism uh, also we cannot get any accurate uh, measurement of this high and low tide so it will lead to a problem yeah, the high and low tide it, for example it is very much helpful in aquaculture industry even in high high tide they used to open the sluice gate and get the water if we are not getting the proper data of high tide we cannot use uh, open the sluice gate to uh, uh, get the water if we are if a farmer is practicing a traditional way of uh, shrimp aquaculture and here the picture shows the current meter uh, this two picture one is uh, before deployment this is after deployment you can see the current uh, meter which is deployed for 3 months you cannot see the current meter after the deployment after three months uh, we, only the frame is visible to us but we cannot see the we cannot see the current meter because it is completely fouled with the goose barnacles and uh, uh, coming to the point is uh, the scientific view of marine biofouling marine biofouling can, can be classified uh, based on this uh, macroscopic and mi microscopic nature if it is uh, not visible to our naked eyes uh, uh, that is called as macro, uh, uh, not visible to our naked eyes it is microfouling we need a microscope to see this biofouling organism that is called as microfouler or microfouling and if it is visible to our naked eyes it is if you are seeing the animals it is called as macrofouling though uh, such so marine biofouling uh, will have uh, the only because of this biofouling then only macrofouling start this both the process will occur on a sequential way which i am tabulated here all the rose boxes are the representation of macrofouling all the green boxes are the representation of macrofouling so it will happen in these sequence Uh, initially if we are immerse for example if i am immersing a metal coupon a metal coupon mean a plain surface of a steel or a stainless steel even it even a for p or any glass if i am immersing a surface in a sea water immediately the uh, organic molecules present in the sea water uh, it may be a carbohydrate or a protein or a lipid or any other bio molecules because of the ionic nature they come and stick onto the surface that will form a organic film if the this will happen immediately once the surface is immersed in the water it is not only for the surfaces even it is the same for a ship hull which is uh, having the uh, contact with the sea water once it is clean after dry docking if it is clean and if it is immersed in the sea water also immediately the fouling will occur so that's what this step is very important here in this particular slide so initial deposition of organic molecule will occur uh, once the organic molecules st started a organic biofilm the bacteria present in the water the planktonic bacteria which have the tendency to attach with the help of the van der waals force they come and stick onto those uh, organic biofilms some of the bacteria have a reversible ad adhesion and some of the bacteria they have the irreversible adhesion if it is in a reversible adhesion the flow of the water the bacteria they get loosely they will bind up from the surface the organic biofilm surface but those bacteria which is uh, sticking onto the surface in an irreversible manner because of this van der waals force they form the biofilm community and they become the suction and they become the microfouling community and they started secreting the slime as i given the example that daily 
we can see the slimy appearance in our saliva that the same appearance will happen in that uh, biofilms also that bio that slime is nothing but the extra polysaccharide secretion and that is the major food property for the diatoms and larvae once there is a slime secretion there may be a tendency of the diatom i am talking about the algal which are floating in the water that uh, diatom they will come once to come to the surface till this process till that sequence we call it as a microfolding so this uh, uh, bacteria diatom and extra polysaccharide rich biofolding is very attractive to the larvae present in the water what are all these larvae and what are the spores we will see in the next subsequent slide but these larvae and spores are nothing but the bernicle mussel and seaweed baby forms they are the larvae and the spores they will come and stick on to those microfolding community once they stick on to the fouling community they will adhere with the help of a adhesive protein they used to call it as a cement protein and they will uh, just become very firm and they are sessile there and they started growing as a macrofolar and this succession start and just disturbing this macrofolding succession community is not easy and eradicating this uh, macrofolding community in a ship hull or a bottom is not a easy job that's what all the shipping industry are having the dry dock uh, area in their port or harbor area and this shipping industry people are providing a large amount pouring large amount of money to clean this biofolding so this is an example given by martin in pillows one on uh, in his paper actually uh, this paper is particularly published on 2015 where the where he said once the the, the biofilm will occur within a minute and it will grow started growing a month year and it will progressing like that okay so within a minute the organic uh, particles will come and stick onto that within an hour the primary producers they will come and stick onto that and within a day the secondary colonizer and the within a week the larval form tertiary colonizer and within a month we can see the biggest bow bio macrofolas they will stick onto the surfaces though there will be excessive growth of this is the surface and see the thickness of the surface is increasing so that the weight of the surface will increase any weight increase or the thickness is increasing or any uh, loss of the smooth surface is because of, it's a big problem in the shipping industry that is called as marine biofouling problem <clears throat> so the bacteria as i said bacteria uh, is one of the hero in that we cannot see the bacteria but we can take the bacteria with the help of uh, any kind of uh, broth we can stick it or we can kiss the colony or we can stain with this kind of some kind of dyes a fluorescent dyes and we can see it microscope but it is a diatom folate we can see uh, in a surface uh, we can see such kind of a, a greeny or blacky nature of uh, fouling and if we scrub this fouling and see we can, if we see it in the microscope we can see a, a ornamental the shape of a diatom these diatoms are uh, look very beautiful and these are all the problems in the microfolding community then the main culprit macrofolar the bernicle so actually uh, i just want to say the basic biology of the bernicle actually the adult bernicle which is the arthropod which is belongs to the separate community they in the adult form they uh, just release the gamete in the environment and the uh, the fertilized egg uh, uh, after development in uh, undergone some metamorphosis stage metamorphosis stage is nothing but the larval forms actually this uh, uh, larvae have a two kind of life cycle one is sessile stage and a uh, uh, free swimming stage uh, that is pelagic fouling stage that a uh, planktonic stage mm -hmm. this uh, particular bacteria they were uh, the particular bernicle they will uh, release the gamete and uh, uh, the the fertilized egg will develop as an aplie that aplie have the six stages and the sixth and aplie stage it become a separate in this separate form they will come and settle as a juvenile for the separate form it have a pseudo leg with this pseudo leg it can detect the uh, microfolding as i said it search for a with the with the separate uh, leg the pseudo leg it will walk on the surface and just find out where this uh, microfolding is there and they will stick on to those surfaces so if if we are uh, controlling the separate settlement we can control this uh, particular bernicle fouling community that's what i made this slide 
So if we understand this only, we can uh, know where we have to control this barnacle. So separate settlement is the major problem where we have to control the uh, marine barnacles in biofueling industry. So here, some of the adult barnacles you can see here, and I, uh, even in the biotic, even in the bivalve mollusk also it is getting settled. Uh, this picture already I shown this picture, a camera which is uh, retrieved from the depth of the sea. The completely it is found with the barnacles. And uh, these are all the other genus having the same kind of life cycle. So they, they also have the free swarming planktonic life cycle as well as the sail form. And this have to be controlled in the separate stage. And uh, this is the another example of uh, green mussels. The green mussels have the bicell threads. And these with the bicell thread only, they used to stick onto the surface. And removing this uh, green mussel from any surface is not an easy joke. We need a sharp knife or any mechanical device to in this uh, particular green muscle, even it is the biggest problem in the propeller here, which is shown in this picture. Uh, see, even this green muscle is having this kind of planktonic formation. They have a trochopore, B willinger, a pedivillinger, then spat settlement. The spat settlement here, we can see the spat here, if they have a pseudo log, like separate, they also walk on the surface to find out the microfolding community. Then they will stick, uh, the spat will settle there and they become the adult uh, green muscle here. So to control the green muscle, we have to control the spat settlement here. These pictures are taken from CMFRI reference, and this is the particular work also done by CMFRI people. Mm -hmm. And uh, here and another, another example of uh, uh, green muscle fouling. So here, uh, sorry, uh, seaweed fouling. So even the seaweed, they have a free swimming spore forms. This, after that only the spores settle on some surface and this thallus will grow uh, like this. And the talus will become a big mesh to control even the propeller of a ship, or it may be a biggest problem in the hull, or it may be a problem in the uh, tight cage. I think someone is uh, uh, disturbing with their uh, mic. Can you mute your mic, yes. please? Yes. yes, sir, I will mute. Yeah, please, please. So this is the problem here in the, uh, because of this uh, CV. And this is the other culprit, which is, I said, tube flex worm. This big worm belongs to the uh, uh, analyt family. So even tube fix worm, they have a trichopore larvae and they will settle. And after settlement, they will secrete a calcareous tube. And this tube will become a menace for this biofueling industry, uh, particularly marine industry. The cleaning this uh, calcareous tube is not an easy job. And they need some uh, hard mechanical device. Even they are using JCB to uh, touch all these uh, tubes. So as I said, biofilling, marine biofilling is the biggest problem in all these industry and government is almost spending around 5.7 million US dollars per year to prevent this biofilling uh, problem. So generally, uh, but traditionally, actually uh, before 2008 onwards, uh, actually marine all shipping industries, they used uh, anti-fouling paint, which is having a tributyl tin based compound in there. The tributyl tin compound is very effective and they control the entire biofouling uh, process in the ship. So uh, all shipping industry people are very happy and they spend more money on this particular TBT based paint. But the problem is the TBT is slowly it will uh, leached out and they accumulated in the marine environment and they have the tendency to uh, make an imposex in uh, marine organism. Slowly, uh, I, I am, I am one of the molluscan variety, it is reported for a sex reversal, that is called as imposex because of the TBT, tributary. So the uh, International Maritime Agency as well as uh, Maritime Treaty, they completely banned this TBT based paints and now we are in the need of and we are in the search of metal based coating. Uh, clearly uh, notice this word, less toxic metal-based coating because any metal is toxic because we have to use it in a minor quantity, then only it becomes less toxic metal-based coating. Natural-based eco-friendly coating, then biodegradable polymer-based coating and nano-based coating. These are all the four uh, ways to provide solution to this marine biofilling industry. And marine biofilling industry is in search of a new solution to control this problem. Antifoliant technology is a, a, a cyclic process because this cleaning process have to be taken in every interval. See, for example, here I said it is a clean surface. If it is immersed in a water, there will be a microfolding. Then it will be a macrofolding. And again, it have to be clean. It is a 
uh, and it have to be cleaned or repaired, then we can get the clean surface. If I uh, uh, give it in an example, a ship which is having a smooth surface, if it is taken to the uh, sea, there will be a problem of accumulation of biofouling, then macrofouling, barnacle, everything will get settled. Then they are taken to the dry dock. In dry dock, they will clean the biofouling. And again, they will take to uh, sea for the other voyages. And again, accumulation take. And this will process in a cyclic manner. So anti-fouling technology is needed on every interval and we have to work on that. So what we did in the Center for Ocean Research is, actually I just want uh, the previous slides and all, I just want to tell what is biofouling and what is anti-fouling technology. So here, uh, one of the technology, what we uh, used here, that's I'm going to narrate here in the subsequent slide. We uh, biosynthesized a silver nanoparticle with the help of the marine sponges and we coated in the surface and we just try to know whether this, uh, that have the tendency to control this biofouling problem. So these are, this is the flow, what I'm going to narrate in the subsequent slides. So before I am going to, uh, before synthesizing the nanoparticle, I need some kind of organism to test this nanoparticle. So what we did is, we just uh, collect some biofouling uh, biofilms from the ship hulls. So we just uh, isolated the uh, biofilm from the ship hull and we plated with the help of a, a nutrient, uh, some kind of broth, for, for example, Zobel marine agar broth bay and the agar plate we used and we plated the biofilm cultural uh, colonies there. And we isolated around 40 colonies and we found some 16 different uh, unique colonies out there and we just uh, uh, separate this uh, 16 unit colonies with biochemical uh, marker identification, biochemical test. After that, we uh, gone with the, uh, 16 is rRNA sequencing uh, technique that we identify what are the species, uh, what are all those species. With the help of the BLAST, NCBA BLAST, we identify those organisms, and these are all the organisms, uh, MB1 to MB16. I just, uh, for a easy way to understand, I make it as MB1 to MB16. MB is marine biofouling, biofilm forming bacteria one to marine biofilm bacteria 16. These are all the 16 culture collections, which are I'm going to use in the subsequent uh, experiments, okay? So these uh, say sequence we have submitted and uh, when we are talking about the biology of the particular bacterial community, most of the community in the biofilm is firmicutes, uh, then it is acnobacteria and proteobacteria and bacteroids. And this particular work, the isolation of uh, uh, cultivable species, uh, cultivable marine bacterial biofilm forming bacteria from the ship hulls uh, and the identification through 16 RNA. We have published in Biofouling Journal and this paper uh, uh, under the title of 16 is RDNA sequence analysis of culturable marine biofilm, bac biofilm forming bacteria from ship hulls. Uh, this is published in Biofouling Journal. Then now we have a culture, culture collection of bacteria. Now we have to do some, some kind of biosynthesis. And what we did in our lab is we synthesized the silver nanoparticle with the help of our, and the marine sponges. Actually, basically I'm a, a marine biologist. I'm very, uh, I have a, a attraction towards marine sponges. During my PhD, everybody, they used to work on marine sponges because these marine sponges are rich in metabolites. Uh, we know all the, Animals have some kind of metabolites inside, but these sponges, they are known for that uh, metabolites. And everyone in my lab or in every lab, we can see some or people used to collect sponge and they used to work on this secondary metabolites. And all the people, they, uh, they are searching for a drug. But what I thought, I want to be unique from the people who are doing the routine work. I just want to utilize these secondary metabolites for this biosynthesis uh, work. So what I did is I just collected some sponges uh, that is uh, uh, the sponge name is Acanthala elangata. Uh, uh, here I want to pinpoint that this Acanthala elangata is not a scheduled one. And this I confirmed with the help of MOAS through with the ZSI scientist. And then even with the, during the collection, I just made a sustainable collection. I just collected the small frag. I'm not disturbed the entire animal. I just collected the small frag with the help of a scuba diver. Then we took this uh, particular small frag of this uh, sponges to the lab and we do some aqueous extract with the water. 
actually i i don't want to go for any kind of uh, uh, ethanol methanol extraction i just want to try whether it, uh, it is possible to extract the uh, metabolites through aqua solution i just use sanded water to extract the uh, marine uh, sponge extract then as a normal procedure i added the silver uh, salt in that and i uh, did some kind of mechanical stirring work for, for uh, two hours with the with the 60 degrees celsius of heating i found that the particular pink color the, actually the sponge is amber color when i got and when, when i got the extract it is in pink color when i add the silver salt and i do the mechanical stirring work for two hours at 60 degrees celsius the, the pink color turned to yellow color that is uh, brownish yellow that is the preliminary success for the nanoparticle synthesis uh, synthesis happen so that that is the nanocolloid which again we have the preliminary confirmation with the uv absorption which we got it got the absorption at 426 i think 426 nanometer that is visible in this graph i think you can see the acanthal elongate sponges here and the pink color to the color change also visible in this inlet of this graph to know the colloidal surface uh, or the colloid solution, we are, uh, with the help of a uh, centrifugation, we just get the powder of the nanoparticle and I just got the 10 images of the nanoparticles and I, I saw some of the pictures. Actually, uh, Dr. Ganesh explained, the, actually I have done, did both the things. I have uh, synthesized gold nanoparticle as well as silver nanoparticle. As Ganesh sir explained all the gold nanoparticle uh, in his presentation, I'm just narrating the silver nanoparticle synthesis here, alone here. Actually, the, even our, our silver nanoparticles, they have a rough spherical shape and uh, it, it have a shape almost, it varied from 15 to uh, 34 nanometer and we almost, uh, 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 most of the particles are 24 nanometer size and it is spherical in shape that is also visible at the 10 image. So I confirm the image shape of the thing and I can confirm the size of the nanoparticle. I just want to know the crystalline nature of the nanoparticle and I want to confirm that with the XRD. This is the confirmatory measurement which I have done in XRD analysis. With the standard J JCPDS powder pattern of silver, I got the following peaks at 38.1, 44.3, 34.5 and 77.4. This is the standard peak and almost I got all the four peaks which is perfectly coordinating with the standard peak and I confirm that I got a silver nanocrystal. Then I want to analyze what is the agent behind this. The, I, I just extracted the sponges but I want to know what is the agent behind that which is helping the capping the silver salt to become the silver nano uh, particle. So uh, with the help of FTR, we came to know that amines are playing the major role and they are playing the capping agent and, uh, and they're making the silver salt. So this particular biosynthesis work, as I, I'm the first person who reported uh, sponge-based biosynthesis, uh, the paper which is published in Material Letter in the title of Marine Sponge Extract Bio Assisted Biosynthesis Solenar Particle. This particular work is highlighted by the Nature India Journal. So, this is also, uh, uh, they have highlighted that it is a unique work and they appreciated the work which I have done with the collaboration of Zoological Survey of India, National Institute of Ocean Technology, as well as in Anamala University with uh, guidance of uh, Dr. Ajmal Kansar. So we have a culture collection of bacteria and we have a uh, uh, biosynthesized silver nanoparticle. So I want to check whether this nanoparticle is having the ability to control the biofilm forming bacteria. So I have done the zone of inhibition experiment. You all know what is the zone of inhibition. There is nothing but a well diffusion method. So I, I use the bacteria MB1 to MB16, which I have already isolated from the ship pulp. And uh, in the well, I have used different kind of nanoparticle concentration, 2.5, 5, 7.5, and 10 microgram of uh, nanoparticle per well and uh, control of sodium hypochlorite I used per 1 ppm and I almost I even I got uh, even in 2.5 and 5 uh, I got the complete zone a big zone so I confirmed that uh, the silver nanoparticle which we synthesized in our lab is having a good uh, amount of zone of inhibition. Then I just want to confirm whether it is having the ability to control the biofilm formation. 
though it is completing the zone so zone of inhibition i just want to know that biofilm inhibition generally biofilm formation can be measured with the help of any kind of bacteria which is having the tendency to form biofilm yeah, that, that can be taken in a test tube and in a subsequent interval if we decan the broth and the biofilm in the test tube can be stained with the uh, crystal violet and the crystal violet can be measured in the od value so that can that can that, that is the uh, method we can uh, measure the thickness of the biofilm the same process i which i have used here but here in the control i have not used any kind of nanoparticle whereas in the uh, uh, on the experimental part i have used 5 microgram nanoparticle you can see the four days there is a growth of the biofilm so you can see uh, bio fouling uh, formation is growing this uh, it, in mb1 in the control it is uh, the biofilm thickness is increasing whereas with the help of nanoparticle uh, it, uh, the, the entire process is uh, controlled here the same uh, kind of pattern uh, from mb1 it is almost uh, same here, here in all the 16 strain so like zone of inhibition here uh, again this proved that the particular biosynthesized nanoparticle with the help of the marine spawns is having the ability to control this biofilm formation then i just want to know whether it is controlling the growth of the bacteria generally we will test the uh, growth uh, kinetics the growth of the bacteria with generally if you take the bacteria in a broth and we take the od uh, per in uh, per hour in an interval for 10 hours or 12 hours we can get the log phase progressive phase and decline phase of the bacteria the same technique i used here with and without nanoparticle the blue line shows with the without nanoparticle whereas the green line and red line shows with nanoparticle the blue line shows it is uh, happily growing without nanoparticle whereas when incorporate the nanoparticle there is the log phase uh, there is no progressive phase it is getting decline so this kind of pattern is available in all the bacteria from mb1 to mb16 it is clearly visible it is completely Uh, arresting the growth of the bacteria so the bacteria is uh, the bacteria is controlled with the silver nanoparticle uh, which we have synthesized in our lab all these three method it become a, a best paper in coll collagen and surface b which is highly cited article uh, in, my, in one of my one of, one of the paper which is highly cited in my research work so this particular paper also published in collagen and surface the title silver nanoparticle with anti microfouling effect a study against marine biofouling forming bacteria then i uh, actually we have the now we have uh, uh, check the nanoparticle have the tendency to control the biofilm bacteria but i want to test in the uh, test uh, this uh, particular nanoparticle to coat in sur some surface and i have to test the surface for microfouling as well as macrofouling effect so to coat that uh, particular nanoparticle we use silane as the uh, uh, binding agent uh, we, we all know silane have the hydrophobic property here we do, do the silanization of the metal surface and with the help of the silanization we uh, uh, made a mono layer of silver nanoparticle on the surface and that we use for the subsequent uh, experiments so after coating this is the normal uh, without uh, silver nanoparticle coated uh, surface there is no nanoparticle this is silen coated nanoparticle uh, and this is uh, silver uh, nanoparticle uh, adhered nanoparticle that is it is coated nanoparticle so uh, coated surface so you can see uh, the my, my, my uh, electron microscopic picture shows the spherical nanoparticle are adhering on the surface here this ribbon shape is because of the silen so silane is having the tendency of hydrophobic nature and the silver nanoparticle is having the tendency of antibacterial so that will be a, a good a hypothesis for me that definitely it have the tendency to control the microfouling as far as macrofouling so i want to know how much percentage of silver is available in the coated surface so i gone with energy dispersive x ray spectrum and uh, in the particular control uh, in the coated silver nanoparticle coated surface i got 87.56 percentage of silver and 0.4 percentage of silicon so the silicon is giving a hydrophobic nature and the uh, definitely the silver is going to give the antibacterial nature to test the hydrophobic nature i did a contact angle measurement which is also available in our lab 
and we found that the contact mangle measurement is almost uh, uh, for the treated uh, uh, surface i mean silver uh, coated surface it is 122 it is highly hydrophobic and we use this for further experiments so we immerse that coated surface in a sea water for a period of interval and then we retrieve the sample and i check the i scrapped out the biofilm and check whether it is having the bacteria or there first i check the scrap the biofilm and gone for a colony forming unit measurement where i can see low colony forming units so it shows that it have the tendency to control the biofilm formation whereas the untreated is having a high level of colony forming unit okay the same thing we want to check with the acry acridine orange staining. So you can see uh, the bacteria can be stained in the red color. You can see the, uh, unco uh, the control one, it is completely red. Let's see uh, bacteria are uh, adhering here and there. Uh, it is uh, adhering completely, whereas in the silane, it is adhering here and there. And here it is completely black. And you can see some kind of red color patches also there. And you can you may ask the question, so uh, there are also bacteria is sticking there. Why you are saying there is no bacteria? To test that whether it is live or not, we gone for a live data analysis. And this live data experiments also here shown here. The green color, it is completely say in surface, the, uh, the surface, the control surface, which is not having the silver nanoparticle. The bacteria is living happily and it is uh, visible in green color. Whereas in the silane as well as in the silver nanoparticle coated thing, it is red in color. Even in silane, you can see some of the green color, but in the uh, silver nanoparticle coated surface is completely red in color that shows that the bacteria are dead and it may not be formed the uh, it, it, it cannot have the ability to form the biofilm and that is also visible in the same slides so there it is completely uh, no bacteria here but here you can see bacterial mat formation here and there so now we test the microfouling in the laboratory and just we want to know whether it is possible to do any kind of laurel settlement assay. So we deployed these surfaces with the help of NIOT in the fishing hardware, and we just check whether any larval settlement uh, uh, was arrested in there. So on the fifth day, uh, we check whether what is the larval settlement rate in the uh, uh, coated, uncoated, and selenized surface. Whereas in uncoated, that is a control thing, there are, so there are some larval settlement. The uh, mainly hydroids and uh, the pink color it is crassostria and the blue color is bernacle and even in the silenized surface also some kind of settlement is there whereas in the uh, silver nanoparticle coated surface there is no uh, larvae settled there this kind of pattern is visible even 10th day the same thing visible for 15th day and now the subsequent day also visible but we are uh, making it as a patent and i'm not showing the results here and we, uh, and we are going the patent for this particular work. The entire technique, as well as what are the instrument, what we are using, what are the coatings we are, uh, uh, we want, how we can coat the nanoparticle, and what are all the uh, equipments used to uh, measure this coating, and what are all the techniques used to study the biofilms, and uh, what are all the other methods to uh, uh, talk about deal with the biofilm formation and uh, other kind of molecular technique, everything is tabulated and I, I made it in a chapter. This, this chapter is published in a book called Marine Omics Principle and, uh, and Application, uh, uh, which is which belongs to the Taylor and Francis CRC public, uh, publications. And the title of the chapter is Application of Nanoparticle in Marine Biofilm Control and Characterization. And uh, now uh, almost I gave an example of a nano-based control. I just uh, give a glimpses of a natural-based uh, product of control. So uh, this is the work done by my uh, postdoctoral student, Dr. Nalini. What she did is she isolated a uh, uh, marine sponge-associated bacteria. And that bacteria have the tendency to produce a compound called pyrola. So what she did is, she isolated the bacteria and she structurally elucidated the compound and she got the structure of the compound and she did some bioinformatics work and she also worked on uh, muscle bises thread formation as well as separate settlement. So the compound she found out is pyrola which is with the help of NMR. 
and she uh, did some work on dry docking particularly she worked on the adhesion uh, the diatom adhesion protein as well as the pyrola copper and she uh, get the good uh, uh, docking score and she also worked with the cyprid and uh, cyprid settlement and she got the better results and she published this particular uh, results in the uh, again in collage and surface b uh, the title of the paper is pyrola isolated from marine sponge associated bacteria uh which is having a the antifouling study based on molecular docking diatom adhesion and muscle biases thread inhibition and we also published the virtual screening that particular bioinformatics paper in the ijms in the title virtual screening of marine natural antifouling in silico approach to screen antifouling metabolites from marine sponges this is the another work carried out by another postdoctoral fellow dr g kavita she also uh, worked on the same aspect but she produced a php that is a bacterial biopolymer with the bacterial biopolymer she uh, uh, created a nano composite coating so she with the silver as well as with the php she created a coating and she made it uh, a good work a good piece of work and she is patenting that work and also she published a paper book uh, we are all the uh, co-author there uh, dr kavita as well as rengasamy sir from madras university and myself as the co-author there and this particular book is available in amazon that is marine biopolymer and its antifouling application and we also published a chapter in the springer publication uh, in the marine biotechnology volume 1 eco friendly synthesis of an biopolymer nano composites and its application as a potent marine antifouling agent and uh, here again why i want to uh, 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 give this particular slide is uh, as uh, ganesh sir said that uh, our center is uh, one of the nodal center for marine biotechnological studies recognized by the ministry of earth sciences government of india and we are established with the earth science technology cell and we have the five major project and one of the project is handled by me uh, my collaborators are dr g darani from national institute of ocean technology and from dr g v gupta from cfpr in kochi uh, even the second uh, which is highlighted in yellow color that particular aspect uh, i am working on uh, uh, nano uh, uh, technology based modification surface modification to control anti fouling uh, property in this particular project we have created a setup a microcosm uh, we can do any kind of biofilm isolation and we are doing a regular uh, collection of uh, micro fouling uh in different area and we are having a culture collection of bacteria and we have a culture collection of diatom so that anybody can approach us and we can do any kind of testing here apart from that uh, we are also having the these kind of uh, standardized procedure in our lab marine bacterial fouling test where we can do thickness measurement chlorophyll measurements libid assay and gbs based bacterial genomic test uh, analysis the same we can do in diatom the diatom adhesion and like the population of diatom macrofolding settlement uh, we, even we have the uh, standard procedures for those things and field exposure we even we have some kind of uh, uh, collaborators and we also have a harbor in uh, jpr mutam uh, uh, harbor where we in kanyakumari we have a harbor which is with the field research facility where we are exposing our pupan and we are doing the work and we are also doing all kind of biomass weight accumulation seasonal series of the laurel settlement at all we are doing that and apart from that as i said we are doing some in silico by in silico bioinformatics and testing also that in this project uh, i just want to highlight here any collaborators or anybody for the those staff working uh, uh, the, uh, listening to this kind of particular topic if they are having any kind of natural product or any kind of nano product or any kind of synthesis product which having the tendency of hydrophobic or uh, uh, which is having the tendency to kill some, some kind of organism or it is having an antibacterial activity just come to our lab and come collaborate with me and they can come with a uh, combined uh, publication or a patent or any kind of uh, future project that is the take home message i am planning to give it to you for all of us again these are all my area and uh, even in this area also i am welcoming any kind of collaboration and uh, you all know my gmail id as well as uh, my institutional id and my number here even i am in the whatsapp group and thank you thank you everybody for patiently listening to this 
Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the wonderful presentation that you have given. So we have uh, okay. uh, questions in the chat box. And uh, first of all, uh, Dr. M. Anyway, I am sorry. Actually, I am running out of time, it seems. Anyway, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> no problem, sir. No problem. Sir, uh, there is uh, like Dr. M. Movindan has to, like, he is like, he would like to add some point, like uh, one additional information. Adequate deposition of macro follows also will increase the weight of the ship hull. Due to this factor, the vessel fuel consumption will be increased. Like he just wanted to add that. And the questions are there from uh, the participants. Uh, what will be they do after removing the macro falling uh, organisms from ship hull? Like the, what, what will be the uh, after process of that? Like that one participant is asking. So oh, any kind of, uh, yeah, okay. First thing is uh, for a moving and thing, yeah, definitely this weight accumulation as well as the roughness, both will have an impact on the uh, ship hull. That how to be that how to be taken care. For that only we are cleaning the ship and we are taking to the trade dock area and we are cleaning that thing. The biggest thing is uh, right now uh, with the shell we are we can extract some chitin or chitosol or any kind of material from the shell. Right now there is no uh, even though uh, such kind of information there 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 is no any kind of clear uh, message about the bio prospecting of the I, after cleaning accumulation of those organisms, still uh, I have not come out uh, any good paper to highlight here. But if people are ready, if they, if they, are, they are ready to work on that, that will be a, uh, another area with, which is having the, uh, what is the usage of biofueling after the, the trade of cleaning. That will be, will come in the new uh, area of interest. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, uh, next question is like from Anu Gobina. Did you characterize the secondary metabolites in the aqueous extract of sponge? She would like to know that. Yeah, that's what we have characterized that. And we, uh, for, for the initial thing, we came to know that it is amine and we are working on the amine analog now. Uh, for us, in the case of uh, the Manalini's work, that is on the compound, the, uh, we have even gone for up to NMR level and we identified the compound. That is the secondary metabolite we identify. That is the pyrrolite. Okay, sir. So next question is from. Uh, can I? Yeah, please. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for your excellent presentation. Uh, thank you. Sir, actually, uh, your work is with uh, sponges, no? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so, since uh, they are a rich source of uh, alkaloids, okay. uh, I. I, I find that your student has isolated uh, the compounds from the bacteria associated with the sponge, yes. isn't it? Yes, yes. And, um, your nanoparticle synthesis is uh, using the marine sponge extract, aqueous yes. extract. Yes, yes. So what I have, uh, my question was that um, since I'm working on seaweeds, uh, that is why I'm asking, uh, I have an interest in this topic. So uh, since... Um, uh, my question is uh, whether that uh, water soluble extract, uh, whether uh, you had done any preliminary chemical test for alkaloids, uh, because uh, basically sponges are a rich source of alkaloids and you already got uh, some kind of this uh, pyrolo uh, amine type of compounds uh, mm -hmm. from the bacteria itself. Uh, so I, I, my question is whether you have done any alkaloid test on the um, aqueous extract of the uh, sponge which you used for the nanoparticle synthesis. So we got some alkali compounds when we have the spectrum, but they are not the uh, uh, main compound which is helping in the nanoparticle reduction, as well as these alkalides, when we are talking about the uh, bacterial, associated bacteria also, they are not providing any kind of bioactivity. We find some kind of alkalides, but uh, when in the case of amine, they are the major agent which is helping in this uh, reduction whereas in the bacterial extract we thought the uh, pyrola is alone having the bioactivity i say there are alkaloids but they are not providing the uh, bioactivity what we are expecting uh, but uh, the uh, you ex you expect it from the amino groups no yeah we got it from uh, the amino groups yeah and, uh, most of the alkaloids are also having uh, amino group amino groups uh, so that is my question whether uh, these amino groups are uh, a part of the alkaloids uh, which are already there in sponges yes uh, that's what i said actually uh, we are working on that uh, particular analog particular that as i said it is a patent work i'm just and uh, i'm unable to explain more in detail 
oh. but we are we have done some kind of brief uh, a, a detailed analysis of that particular analog oh. so that we are working on that. okay sir. okay sir. thank you thank you, you ma'am but you have cast the point ma'am <laughs> yeah yes sir Thank, thank you. Uh, because uh, I have already worked with CVs. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, sir, we have uh, five more queries. Uh, shall we go to that or? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, let them. No problem. Okay, okay sir. Sir, uh, Dr. Maya Kanan uh, wants to know that what are the sampling techniques follows followed to obtaining the biofouling samples? Uh, I, like he would like to request that, if possible, please explain on the sampling sites and depth of the samples. So I do one thing, if uh, already I have explained during the presentation, I do one thing, I have the email ID of Maya Kanan here. I, I, in all my papers, I have narrated about how I have done the sampling at all. So I will send all the papers to all the participants as especially to Maya Kanan also, so that it can be very easy for the entire procedure, it will be available in the materials and methods uh, area so that he can use the same thing. Even he want to contact me through email after reading that also, I am uh, very much welcome on that. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. That will be very helpful, sir. Sir, uh, Remya R wants to know that what is the OD or optical density of uh, for finding the biofilm thickness? So, hello? Uh, like, what is the OD, optical density, for finding the biofilm thickness? Uh, uh, we have used 620. 620, yes, sir. Hmm. Like uh, she, she, I think she is uh, going for some optical density, particular point of. Even she can but use the same kind of a silver nanoparticle paper, that collagen surface paper. She can because uh, most of the people, those who uh, you, those who used to cite this paper, they said they are using the same technique. So even she can refer the paper and she can uh, reproduce the same methodology to do the OD measurements in the particularly that uh, crystal violet measurements. Okay, so thank you. Sir. Sir, uh, Lubna Gazia wants to know that, uh, like, uh, please mention some common fouling microalgae or diatoms found in Chennai coastal waters. Uh, particularly Ritchie and Navicula, they are having the, uh, if, we are, if, if we are capable to isolate some of the species, it will be very good. Even some serratium species, they are having the tendency to adhering to the surface. Though there are a lot of uh, diatoms are available, planktonic stage, but some of, some few species, particularly Nichia, Navicula, uh, as well as serration species, they are having the high tendency uh, to adhere to such species. Okay, sir. Sir, so, uh, Elaine uh, wants to know that uh, will the usage of marine derived coating on practical aspect can have an impact on marine biodiversity equilibrium? Also, how sure we can be about the persistent duration for this nano coating? See, uh, actually, uh, this is the major problem in the marine biofilm industry. So, as I said, tributyl tin, which uh, gave the best result till 2008, people use that paint. Though it is used in the less amount, but a slow uh, leaching out of any, even in a sugar, if we eating in excess, it become a toxic. So, the main thing is we have to find out that minimal and optimal level to arrest the targeted animal alone. That, that is the main criteria of biofilm uh, uh, research work. If you are working on that, definitely it will be very helpful. If we are not uh, coming to any kind of a better solution of the minimal use of such kind of a compound, it may be a natural compound or a metal-based compound or any other compound, if it is being excess, definitely it will be reflected in the biodiversity. Even it, <clears throat> it will be reflected in the non-targeted organism. And definitely there will be some kind of a decrease or an increase in kind of any kind of population. So that's what uh, the main uh, thing is there. The nucleus of this particular work is we have to find out the exact uh, amount of concentration to work on the control of these organisms. Uh, sir, um, I wanted to add one more question to regarding this. In one of your slides, you have shown acridin orange images like yes. after three uh, days or some incubation hours, yes, the sir. amount yes. of bacteria and you have done also the live or dead cell count. So yes, what you have found is it's a dead cell, right? Yes, uh, so, uh, sir, the question is that if that is the condition which is going to happen, when you are uh, going to deploy this in the natural ecosystem, in a marine system, uh, what about any other bacteria which can also get affected, which is part of the microbial biodiversity? 
So, that's the that is the same uh, answer, ma'am. That's what I am saying. Actually, whatever thing we want, to, it is not possible to classify which is the targeted and which is the non-targeted organism. Everything is in the pool of that community, and we have to work on that. The biggest thing is if we are touching, if if you are if you want to construct a building in some area, definitely you have to first clear the uh, animals which are all uh, living in the soil environment. So without eradicating that soil environment biodiversity, we cannot build any kind of building. So that's what it is the essentiality and the need and how we are working on that. How what is the concentration we are giving to the environment and how is how it is less toxic to the environment. There is no compound called uh, any any compound is toxic to an environment in an and uh, 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 in an uh, uh, maximum quantity. But we have to come to an, a minimum quantity. That's what we plan to work on nano level. Even so, uh, whatever I am founding there, uh, whatever the findings, whatever uh, I got in my research, definitely it will have the impact on the non-targeted bacterial species. Not only non-targeted bacterial species, other organisms also have the tendency to die. So if uh, if I want to kill the larval of a barnacle or a green mussel. definitely other larvae which are in the planktonic stage that also have the same ability also but the, my aim is to help the community which is directly involved in the ship industry actually i am not going and pouring the entire thing in the sea water we are just painting in the ship hull whatever organism they are having the contact towards that ship hull only have the impact if it is leaching out and having there definitely there will be a minor impact on the non targeted organism that definitely there will be some kind of impact and people are working on that and even even we are all so working on that and that is this question is will be there for every meeting whenever i am going for a review meeting everybody will throw stone with the same question on me and i am just uh, uh, explaining the same answer to them but they have to That yeah, but that, but definitely we have to come with the solution even to treat uh, treat a cancer if you are do, uh, going for a chemotherapy definitely it will kill the normal cells also but we have to save that popular uh, human so like chemotherapy yeah yes ma'am since you being the subject expert and you have this much year these many years of experience uh, uh, do you think how much will be the duration of this pipeline to go into the real stage where we can have this practically made possible to actually I, i don't know the exact answer i can say on scale here actually tbt is used from 2000 uh, 2000 not 18 19 uh, 60 or somewhere else from there they are do, using tbt paint but they came to know that tbt is uh, uh, toxic only on 2003 and they banned it on 2008 so still this much here they have used it so then they are we are searching for a new compound maybe um, whether i my compound is going to be in the market or not even if my compound is coming to the market slowly one fine morning it may ha- there may be a tendency to uh, even ban that compound also then we have to even the animals whatever uh, being in the environment they have the tendency to even they have the resistance to that compound also so we cannot give a particular scale for an uh, if we are working on nature we cannot scale it like that within this year it can be uh, toxic or like that we cannot scale it that's what i am saying sir can i ask one more question yes ma'am yes ma'am please uh, sir actually since you have done from the sponge as a extra yes. Yes. Uh, but uh, it's a higher trophic level right yes. so uh, from when we are collecting it as a live sample or something there is a restriction or limitation a bit because of the original diversity shouldn't uh, be affected especially the population community so in that case what about trying for something from lower trophic levels like microalgae or uh, something because that is more easy to harvest or to maintain so have you ever looked into in that aspect uh, because though the previous um, professor has already mentioned about the microalgae and everything i'm still asking like uh, what is the advancement in that Uh, sector like from the microalgal perspective or something which can be harnessed easily so keeping biodiversity in mind and the sustainable utilization of the all these kind of higher tropical or uh, uh, level of organism now we stop touching these organism and we are completely working with uh, by microbial population only we are just working on deep sea microbes and even i got a project on the same thing how to uh, i elucidate such kind of compound from the deep sea microbe 
uh, the sponge, as you said, uh, touching a sponge is uh, it's a very very crucial thing. As uh, some of the sponges are a scheduled animal, that's what I mentioned that with the proper uh, uh, notification from the MOS and with the help of the scuba diver, we just collect the frag. Even collecting a frag is also not advisable. But now we know what is the compound, and we are in the progress of creating the analog of that particular compound. So that we are working on that analog, and we are doing the biosynthesis work. So, uh, as I said, and now every uh, procedure on the biodiversity is very stringent. We want to stop uh, into higher level, and we are working on the microorganism right now. But what you said, we have to. Everybody have to follow that. Thank you, sir. I was supposed to ask this question in your first uh, two days uh, seminar in that uh, national seminar, but because of some connection. Oh, you are uh, was, you are hearing uh, for the second time. So thank you, yeah, thanks yeah, again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for the elaborate uh, discussion that we have gone gone through. And sir, we have uh, no more questions, but the compliments are coming up in the chat box. Like thank you. Uh, thanks to everyone. Too. Thanks to everyone. Thank yes, Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your patience. Uh, and uh, the thing is, uh, I just want to uh, narrate about the uh, tomorrow's. Uh, and Vinit, can you tell who is going to give the talk for tomorrow? And uh, yes, sir. The tomorrow's session, uh, the same at the same time with the same link of uh, Zoom and with the pa same password. Uh, Dr. K. Govindaraju and Dr. T. Stalindas will be uh, will be uh, uh, like taking care of the classes. Dr. K. Govindaraju will be conducting uh, the class on marine bioresources for aquaculture diseases management, and uh, Dr. T. Stalindas will be conducting uh, the class on toxic effect of nanomaterials. So uh, most of the questions here today is on toxicity. So yes. uh, Dr. Stalin will have the answer for everything. And good night, everyone. Sorry for uh, running out of the time. Thanks for listening patiently for both the lectures. Uh, see you next day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you all.